This video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a skill based daily fantasy game that is super simple to play. Pick two to six players and simply pick how they're going to do based on their projections. Get it right, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. I'm loving the connection that Trevor Lawrence and Calvin Ridley have. So against this Colts defense, I'm taking more yardage on both of them. The beauty of Price Picks is that you're not competing against anyone else. It's just you against the projections available. Best of all, it takes less than 60 seconds to make an entry, and withdrawing your money is as easy as one, two, three. Price Picks offers projections on not just the NFL, but other sports like baseball, college football, basketball, and even disc golf. You name it, Price Picks offers it. And with new promotions every week, it's a no-brainer to make your pick with Price Picks. Use my promo code Gator9 to receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's promo code Gator9. So what are you waiting for? Make your picks this football season with Price Picks. Opening day is always a fun day around the NFL. After months and months of waiting, after having exhausted every storyline in the book, and after countless hours spent drafting fantasy teams, going through the games, making predictions, and doing everything that you do to prepare for the unknown, it is finally here. Hallelujah. And while opening day is an exciting time, as it is the first Sunday of the season, it is also the first Sunday of the season meaning that things might not go all that smoothly right off the bat. This is the case with just about everyone. Players who haven't played a full 60-minute game in 9 months may make mistakes. Broadcasters who haven't called a football game in 9 months may make mistakes and not have their timing all that down, especially if working in a new booth. Yes, some broadcasters work preseason games, but 70% of the time, they're working for a specific team and are not talking about the game so they're doing about as much announcing as you are doing security while you're sitting next to someone on a plane and they say, I have to go to the bathroom. Can you please watch my stuff? As if anyone is going to take it. And this is also the case with not just the broadcasters, but with every element of the television team. We're talking about directors who might not be quick in identifying shots, cameramen who might have some trouble following the ball or biting on play action, and the graphics department making some mistakes. But some mistakes are worse than others. And folks, we've got a mistake for the ages that got Fox in some incredibly hot water, and understandably so. If you're a Carolina Panthers fan, you might remember this one pretty well. Or not, seeing as not only did NFL Throwback do a video on this game, and of the 160 comments on the video, only one mentioned this incident, and seeing as it was 15 years ago, and I feel so old saying that about something that happened in 2008, but if you are not, allow me to enlighten you on an absolutely amazing blunder that Fox made to start the year off. There's bad gaffes, and then there's whatever the heck this is. Because this is the story behind one of the craziest, the worst, the stupidest, and the funniest mistakes all rolled into one in the history of Fox on opening day of the NFL season. Before I talk about the mistake at hand, we need some context to understand the game that took place, because without it, none of this makes any sense at all. It's September 7, 2008, and seeing as it is the opening Sunday of the new NFL season, we have an interconference battle on our hands over a Qualcomm Stadium in San Diego between the Carolina Panthers and the San Diego Chargers. And depending on where you were in the country, seeing as Fox have a doubleheader that week due to CBS covering the US Open, as was tradition back then, you got to see one of three games. If you were in most places on the West Coast, you got to see somewhat of a dud between the Arizona Cardinals and the San Francisco 49ers where the Cardinals won 23-13 in a game that never even felt that close, seeing as the Niners turned it over five times. If you were in most other places across the country, you got to see Joe Buck and Troy Aikman call the battle between the Dallas Cowboys and the Cleveland Browns, where the Cowboys won in a convincing route by a final score of 28-10. Basically, what I'm saying is that there was a highly slim chance 
due to the small market sizes of the teams and the fact that Carolina was not much of a national draw, that you were able to watch this game, unless you had NFL Sunday ticket, or you happened to live in an area close by. But if you were one of the lucky few that was able to watch this game, oh man were you treated well. Because this Chargers Panthers game turned out to not just be the best game of the week, but one of the best opening day games in the history of the NFL. It was a true back and forth affair that still lives on in NFL history all these years later. With the Chargers leading 10-9 in the second half, the Panthers struck back by scoring 10 straight points, with 3 coming on a John Casey field goal from 49 yards out, and 7 coming on a 31-yard football return by cornerback Chris Campbell, and they took a 19-10 lead. However, this explosive Chargers offense was not going quietly into the night, as back-to-back -back touchdown passes by Phillip Rivers in a 5-minute stretch, with one being to eventual Hall of Fame tight end Antonio Gates, and the other being to the late great Vincent Jackson, gave the Chargers a 24-19 lead. With just over 2 minutes left in the contest, the Panthers had to drive 68 yards down the field to get a touchdown if they wanted to win this game and walk away from this one victorious. Sure enough, Jake DeLome engineers a masterful drive where he completes 7 passes to get the Panthers down to San Diego's 14-yard line with 2 seconds left. It all comes down to this final play right here. Get 14 yards, and you win the game. Don't get 14 yards, and the Chargers win. Doesn't get more dramatic than that. As for what happens next, well, roll the tape. Hobbling the snap, DeLone into the end zone. <laughs> and it's caught by Dante Rosario. Magical. Jake DeLone to Dante Rosario for a 14-yard touchdown to end the game on a walk-off with no time left. When you talk about the greatest touchdowns in the history of the Carolina Panthers, this is up there for sure. In the near 30-year history of the franchise, this might be the greatest and most iconic regular season touchdown that they've ever scored. And in terms of all-time touchdowns and winning efforts, you could make the argument that it is number two, only behind Steve Smith's iconic walk-off touchdown against the St. Louis Rams in the 2003 Divisional. It was a great way for the Panthers to start their season, and it was a sign of things to come, as if they could win this game without Steve Smith playing, imagine what they could do the rest of the year, as they ended the season 12-4, won the NFC South, and got a first round by in the process, clinching the number two seed in the conference. We don't talk about what happened in the playoffs. And the man of the hour? None other than this man right here, Dante Rosario. Again, Steve Smith did not play in this game, so the Panthers needed someone to step up badly. And Rosario, the team's fifth-round draft pick from 2007 out of Oregon, absolutely answered the call. He didn't do a whole lot as a rookie, only catching six passes for 108 yards. But on this day, he basically equaled that total that he had all of last season, as he netted seven catches for 96 yards, with one of them being a critical catch on 3rd and 7 to keep the final drive alive, and one of them being, of course, that game-winning touchdown. Rosario led both teams in receptions, which was impressive, seeing as he was only targeted 8 times, so the football was more like a magnet. Rosario led both teams in receiving yards, which I don't think anyone had on their bingo card, seeing as he had 12 more yards than that in all of 2007 combined. And Rosario was the only Panther to score a receiving touchdown, with his receiving touchdown obviously being monumental. It was the play of the game. So it was time for the broadcast to honor him and to recognize his greatness on this day. Much like you have the FedEx air and ground leaders today, back in 2008, you had at the end of games, a UPS sponsored segment, where they would go over the top players at the quarterback, running back, and receiver position. And when it got time to recognize Dante Rosario, well, this happened. Panthers extra point gives them a 26-24 victory. And now for the UPS leaderboard. UPS, what Brown could do for you. DeLome, Williams, and Dawson.
the heroes today for Carolina. So for Brian Baldinger and Laura Oakman, Dick Stockton saying so long from San Diego where... Wait, 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 t- time out. Dick Stockton, you don't get to sign off that easily. Go back to the graphic. Go back to the freaking graphic. Dawson? Rosario Dawson? You mean, uh, you mean the Sin City and Rent actress? That Rosario Dawson? I'm sorry, what? I'm absolutely baffled by this for a few reasons. Number one, this wasn't a simple typo or something like that. This wasn't as though they spelled Dante Rosario's name wrong, where instead of spelling it R-O-S-A-R-I-O, they spelled it R-O-S-O-R-I-O. This was an entirely different person of an entirely different gender. This person right here that you're watching is Rosario Dawson. She's a talented actress, I'm not denying that, and I'm sure most people are not denying that. Her rendition of Out Tonight in Rent was, outside of the incomparable Seasons of Love, about the only good thing to come out of that train wreck of a musical. But I guarantee you, she's not a football player. There has never been a girl to play in the NFL, let alone at the tight end position let alone able to catch the game-winning touchdown pass with no time left, as if this was some sort of Disney movie that would be so unrealistic that it would make Airbud look like a true story, and would make the blind side seem more historically accurate than the first 20 minutes of Saving Private Ryan. I promise you, Rosario Dawson did not score the touchdown here, and did not have 7 catches for 96 yards. I don't even know what the graphics person was thinking about. Number two, you would think that a typo like this would be almost impossible to make. If you're in that production truck, you've got the depth chart and the stats right in front of you. Heck, you might even have it on a computer. All you have to do is copy and paste the name. It's not that hard. This meant that the graphics person Realizing that the depth chart says Dante Rosario, the box score says Dante Rosario, that all the plays on the day have been made by Dante Rosario, and the announcer has said Dante Rosario all day for the past three hours, had to somehow type in Rosario Dawson. And no one, not the person typing it in, not the director, not the producer, and not anyone overseeing the broadcast noticed? Are you kidding me? And number three, Dick Stockton. I know as announcers we have a tendency to go on autopilot when graphics are presented in front of us. Especially if it's not exactly a graphic that you talk about before the game. Trust me, I know, I've been there. But to say Dawson? To actually say his name raw after saying it for the past three hours? To say neither the first nor the last name of the player? I mean, what are we doing here, people? This isn't even like it just slipped off of the tongue and the name got butchered. Because trust me, that happens. I've been there many times myself. This was a pre-planned segment after the game ended that was definitely talked about in the production truck because they came out of a commercial break. This is supposed to be the easiest part of the night. The hard part is done. This is the part where you just wrap it up and take us home. And you somehow screw that up? Everyone here deserves some share of the blame. Unless Rosario Dawson somehow swapped bodies with Dante Rosario, and no one told me about it. A 5'7", 170-pound actress versus a 6'3", 244-pound tight end who's five years younger. Tough call. I get how you screw that up. And after the game, oh man, there was some talk about this, and understandably so. Because this was one of the craziest and most hysterical gaffes ever. Said one writer on the gaff, Dawson is a lot prettier than Rosario, but a lot smaller. I don't know how she was able to get open down the middle so often. Naturally, Dan Bell, a spokesman for Fox Sports, was mortified about the incident, saying on the matter, it was a very simple mistake, and we apologize for it. Especially to Dante Rosario. As for what Rosario had to say, he was confused when he heard about it, and he definitely heard a lot of jokes from his friends. But he was a good sport and he took it all in stride, which is good, saying, I've had people ask me if that had ever happened before. 
Other than that, her first name is the same as my last name. I don't really see any other connection. It was kind of funny, though. So there you have it, folks. The game-winning walk-off touchdown opening day in 2008 was scored not by a tight end named Dante Rosario, but by an actress approaching 30 named Rosario Dawson. Unfortunately, Dante Rosario would not exactly become a household name in the NFL, as even though a lot of people had high expectations for him after that incredible game to open up the 2008 season, he didn't do much of anything. In fact, that touchdown he scored against the San Diego Chargers was the only touchdown he scored throughout the entire 2008 season. He ended up playing eight seasons in the NFL, playing four of those seasons in Carolina, and oddly enough, spent some of that time with the San Diego Chargers. But he didn't do a whole lot of anything. He finished his career with just over 1,200 receiving yards and eight receiving touchdowns. That's it. He was a backup tight end for most of his career. And oddly enough, he set his career high in receptions and receiving yards during that game in 2008 against the Chargers. So for many people, his lasting legacy was being the guy who was mistaken for Rosario Dawson, the actress. Seriously. Again, the opening week of the season is always about dusting off the cobwebs and shaking off the rust. But if you are working in any sort of NFL-related field for the 2023 season, or any season for that matter, here's a quick word of advice. Make sure when you're talking about a player, that said player, you know, actually exists. Make sure when you're talking about who the Jags quarterback is, that it's Trevor Lawrence and not Jennifer Lawrence. Make sure when you're talking about who the top receiver on the Jaguars is, that it's Calvin Ridley and not Ridley Scott. Because according to Fox, Dante Rosario did not score eight touchdowns in his career. He only scored seven. The other one came from the first woman to ever play in the NFL, a 5'7 actress named Rosario Dawson. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.